Hello, welcome back. We are going to continue our discussion on our ultimate AP review. This time we're going to be looking at the 2017 polar function. Hasn't been on the AP in a while, so who knows? We might get lucky this year. So let's see here. We are given the figure above. It's these two, it's this, uh, this figure right here is given by two polar functions. One, f of theta, which is this nasty one, whoops, I want my, one plus sine theta, cosine two theta, and g of theta being this two cosine theta right there. Now this is the, these are, that's a pretty nasty little equation right there. So we're not being doing this by hand, though. Obviously, this is going to be in the calculator section. We're given the bounds, 0 to pi over 2, and we're told R is the region, the first quadrant, bounded by F of theta and the x-axis. So they're telling us that this graph right there is F, and then they say region S is the region in the first quadrant between F and G. So S, so this is F, this obviously has to be G of theta. So the first question is pretty simple. They say, what is the area of R? And this is a polar function, so I can write that out pretty easy. I'm going to do it right under down here, I guess. So for A, the area is just a polar graph. So from 0 to pi over 2, 1 half, we're looking for the area of R, so that's involving just F. We're looking for this area right here, for R. We're just looking for the area in here that involves F. And that is just going to be uh, F of theta squared d theta. Now they do want the answer here, and in this case if we type it in, I don't have my calculator on this, this will be my iPad, we get 0.648. So for point wise, you get one point for your integral, one point for your answer. Easy quick two points for us. All right, question B. Now this one gets a little bit trickier. Now they're saying ray theta equals k between lies between 0 and pi over 2. It divides S into two areas that are equal. And then it has my favorite phrase in all of mathematics. Right, but do not solve. So an integral equa an, an equation involving one or more integrals that can give the value of k. We're not solving it, we're just setting up. So let's go ahead and graph theta equals k. So studying from the pole, it's going to come out. And we're going to get this angle, theta equals k. That's going to split S into two areas, A1 and A2. And what we know is that these two must be equal to each other. So I just have to find the area. So part B, we can find areas pretty easily. So for part B, we know A1 has to equal A2. So let's just deal with A1 right here. Area 1 right here, this region right here, is going to be the difference in the two radii. If, if this is my like my rectangle of mathematics, I'm looking at g, the radius of g, minus the radius of f. So I'm looking for the area of g minus the area of f. So I can go ahead and write that out. It's going now it's a polar, so don't forget. So we have to do one half. F of theta, oops, sorry. I said g of theta minus f. I'm writing f first. Be careful g of theta squared minus f of theta squared d theta. Now, that's for area 1. Now, I haven't done the bounds yet. We'll talk about that in a second. So now we have to find area 2, and it's the same thing. Area 2 is the same uh, rectangle right here, the same ray. So it is, again, going to be the g value, the area of g. I'm going to find this area of g minus the area of f, and that's going to give me this part right inside of here. And that's what we have to do again. And it's the same exact equation. So it's going to equal 1 half g of theta squared minus f of theta squared d theta. Now, the mistake that people make, okay, the mistake that people make, and I'm going to put this in a different color here, what they'll tend to do is they tend to write like this as being squared. Don't do that, okay? We don't want that. Be careful with that. That is not what we want. That is something totally different. So uh, don't do that, okay? All right, so let's go to black. Hold on. And let's see if I can erase those now. So erase, erase. We don't want that. Because what we're really saying here is this is the area of G squared minus the area of F squared. Remember, our area formula is 1 half R of theta squared D theta. Of course, we got some bounds, A to B. So now let's go ahead and find our bounds. Well, to get the bounds, well, we can take a look up here. Notice 
we are going starting at theta equals zero and we're moving up to k. So the bounds should just go from theta zero to theta equals k. Let's take a look here so I can write that down. The first one is going to be from zero to k. Are you uh, okay with that? And over here, this starts at k and ends at pi over two. And there's your answer. Don't simplify it. Don't erase it. I'm sorry, don't definitely erase it. Don't try to solve it. Don't box it in. Just leave it. And to get the point, it's one point for the integral expression for just one of them, then one point for the whole thing together. All right, now for part C, let's take a look here. Now it's talking about real calculus. It says, for each theta, between theta and pi over 2, let w of theta be the distance between the two points. So I want to now find the distance between g and f. So how can I describe this distance right here? Well, the distance is just the change in the radius, or the radii. My first radius is g, that's the furthest one out, and my second radius is comes from f. That is this polar function down here. So what we can do for here, for c, they, and that's what they ask us to do, right here, write an expression for w of theta. So we're going to go ahead and do that. w of theta is just going to be g of theta minus f of theta. And you get one point for that. Just writing it out. Even if that's all you can do, get that answer. Now they say the following. Next thing they say the following. Find W of A. Well, what is W of A, you ask? Ah, the average value of W of theta on our interval. So now we're looking at our fave. And that is just 1 over pi over 2 minus 0 from 0 to pi over 2 W of theta d theta. Now be careful when you type this in, okay? I'm going to go and write this out. You don't have to do this step, but I'm going to show you exactly what we have to type in. G of theta, which remember, was cosine of 2 theta, whoop, 2 cosine theta, I think, sorry about that, 2 cosine theta, big difference, minus f of theta. And f of theta was this quagmire right up here, 1 plus sine theta cosine 2 theta. That's what you're typing in your calculator, 1 plus sine of theta, Cosine 2 theta. D theta. No squares, no nothing like that. This is what you're typing in your calculator. And uh, you would get one point for just writing it out. Although it, this would be perfectly acceptable too. And that's an ugly looking W right there. So I'm going to make that W look a little bit better in black. W. Now. When you type this in your calculator, what do you get? You should get 0.485. And you get one point for that right there. And you should be able to get all, honestly, you should be able to get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven points on this one, just right there. All right, now the last one is a little bit trickier. So let's take a look here. It says, use the information in C to find the value for which W of theta equals well, the average value. So is the function w theta increasing or decreasing at that value? So there's a couple things going on here that we have to do. Obviously, we have to find theta, and we need a calculator for that. So for part d, the first thing we have to do is we have to find out where does w theta equal our average value. That's what they call w of a. Same thing. So we have to set this 2 cosine theta in our calculator minus this 1 plus sine theta cosine 2 theta, and set that equal to 0.485. Okay, we have to solve that. Now, we can't do this by hand, obviously. This is a sad face. But the calculator can do it. Graph it, y1, y2, and you're looking for that intersection. We have been doing this all year long. Make me proud. Inter... Uh, I can't spell intersection right. Okay, inter... There we go. Section. We're looking for the intersection. And if you solve it, you're going to get theta equals 0.518. And you've just earned one point.
Now we're still not done. We're still not done yet. Uh, what else do we have to do here? It says, is W of theta increasing or decreasing? So what does this mean for us? We need W prime of theta. So that's what we're going to do here. So we want to find now W prime of 0.518. And we can do this on the calculator in numerous ways. We already have, since you already have this graph, might as well just use the graph. Uh, you can do from the graph, you can use menu. If you're using Inspire, it's just menu from the graph, menu, calculus. You can look for 6. I think it says uh, dy, dx. And just going to type in 0.518. And if you type that in your calculator, you should get. Oh, point five one eight as well. Oh, look at that. Sorry, nope, 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 sorry. you don't get that. Sorry, I lied. You should get something that is negative. So, and you should get a negative slope. So that's going to be, uh, I feel what it is, but it's going to be something negative right there for us. So because the slope is negative at that point, we can now say that this is decreasing. So we can say, therefore, W of theta is decreasing at theta equals 0.518. And that's it. You get plus one point for that. All right. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I will see you all next time. We're going to take a look at some integrals next. Okay. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.